Hey there, AP Bio, and welcome back to our lecture for chapters 29.5 and 29.6. We're just doing a small part of this chapter because we're just focusing in on transpiration as we're talking about properties of water. So transpiration is going to answer this question of how big old redwoods get water from the ground all the way up to their leaves for photosynthesis. So transpiration is that movement of water from the ground where they suck it up, uh, up to their leaves, and then out into the atmosphere of the earth. And of all that water that you may be watering your plants at home that goes up into the leaves, about 90% of that water ends up getting lost through transpiration into the atmosphere. So most of it is just funneling through uh, and not actually being used. So think of it just like leaving a spigot on. Every once in a while you grab a glass of water and otherwise that spigot's just running. So not very efficient, but it works for them. So water, it's important to know, is pulled up through some of those properties of water we've been talking about. It is not pushed up. Pushing up would require a whole lot more energy. And you can think of it kind of like a siphon. Um, if you've ever stolen gas, for example, where you put a hose in and uh, create some suction and then the gas just starts flowing or water just starts flowing, um, it's that same exact concept that as that water gets pulled out, it's going to keep that whole system flowing. And so that's why you need that constant flow to make it work. So water is going to enter through little structures called root hairs in the roots. So when you see roots coming up like out of the sidewalk from a tree, those big gnarly bark covered things aren't really what's absorbing the water. That's going to be these tiny little root hairs, these tiny little cellular projections that break up the soil and grab onto that water. That's going to travel through the epidermis of the root and the cortex of the root, which are just different layers in the cells, uh, until it can get to the xylem, which you can think of xylem kind of as the vascular system, like we have veins and arteries, but of a plant. So xylem is going to be pulled up through the or water is going to be pulled up through the xylem or any minerals that are taken up through the soil. And these are basically a, uh, while they're individual cells stacked up next to each other, there's no ends between them. So it's kind of a continuous tube and it's one way transport. It's only going from the roots up. Water is never pushed back down towards the roots. Um, there's also another network called phloem which does have little end walls between the cells, little plates that um, are perforated. So they are like little sieves or colanders that let stuff flow. And that's going to be organic molecules. So when photosynthesis takes place, sugars can go back down the plant to be stored by the roots or used by any of the cells in the plant. And how does water make it all the way up? Well, that's thanks to properties like cohesion, where water molecules are going to stick together, and adhesion, where those water molecules are going to stick to the sides of your xylem vessels. So as water gets taken out of the leaves, it's stuck to the water behind it, and that's going to pull more water up with it. So that cohesion is pulling it up. At the same time, capillary action is happening, where in those really narrow xylem tubes, uh, it's sticking to the end walls and climbing up and then pulling up water with it and then climbing up further and pulling up water with it. So these concepts of adhesion and cohesion that happen with those hydrogen bonds is really important for water movement. And as I mentioned, capillary action, which is how water, because of that adhesion, can move up a tube like you can see in that gif there and the thinner the tube the higher water is able to move and so that's why those xylem vessels are super super narrow so at the end of our transpiration at the end of the xylem it's going to travel into the leaf and it's going to go towards openings little uh holes in the bottom of a leaf called stomata and these stomata uh, are passageways for not just water but also oxygen, which is a byproduct of photosynthesis, to leave plants. It's also a place for carbon dioxide to enter into the plant. Uh, so it's kind of where a plant breathes, breathes in and out. Carbon dioxide is going in to make sugar with photosynthesis. Oxygen's going out uh, to provide oxygen for our atmosphere.
And these openings are controlled by structures called guard cells that you can see right here. Um, and most of the time when transpiration is going on, they're wide open. But in certain circumstances or certain conditions, those stomata can close. And those stomata need to close if water is being lost too rapidly. Uh, because there's not an infinite supply of water in the soil. So they'll close down to conserve water so that the plant doesn't dry out if photosynthesis can't keep up with the rate that water is being gone. So that's one adaptation to slow down transpiration. But there's certain plants that have evolved totally different strategies. So in addition to their guard cells, uh, there's certain plants like CAM, which stands for Crassilicean Acid Metabolism, which is a special type of photosynthesis uh, where the stomata will only open up at night. Um, and so they're going to store carbon dioxide in um, special little structures called vacuoles. They have a really small leaf size to limit the number of stomata. So they have fewer holes that open up uh, to lose water and those guard cells are closed during the day so that um, they can't lose too much water. So in like desert type plants, uh, you're going to see a lot of these. Uh, you'll also learn about C4 plants, which is another specialized form of photosynthesis that's really common in like prairies that can be pretty dry during the summer uh, that allows for plants to regulate transpiration as well. That's all I have for chapter 29. It was a real short section, so a short video. See you next time.